in the last two classes we extensively discussed spin echoes please remember what is a spin echo i explained to you spin echo is nothing but application of two pulses 90 with a delay and another pulse 180 and another delay a identical delay and start collecting the signal you get an echo i explained to you what is an echo and important concept is in the case of homonuclear and heteronuclear two differences we have to consider homonuclear case in the case of spin echo chemical shifts are refocused but not j coupling because if you apply 180 pulse on a the spin states of x also will be reversed at, at will also be affected as a consequence j couplings will not be refocused they continue to evolve and we discuss the same thing for heteronuclear case in the heteronuclear case the, there is a possibility we can do three different experiments you can apply 180 pulse only on a, a, a spin we are only an uh, let us say proton only on carbon or on both both are possible I said if you apply proton uh, 180 pulse only on let us say proton that chemical shift will evolve then what is going to happen to the uh, J coupling they will be refocused because you are not touching the other one other, other nuclei at all only in the case of homonuclear place 180 will disturb both the spin states of A and X but in this case other is not disturbed as a consequence what is going to happen J coupling gets refocused if you apply 180 pulse on any one of the spins whether it is proton or carbon does not matter what happens if you apply simultaneously 180 pulse on both then the spin states of both of them get uh, inverted get affected 180 pulse invert the spin state of both of them then H alpha which is coupled to C alpha will become H beta similarly H beta which is coupled to C beta will become C alpha as a consequence what will happen the J couplings will not be refocused in the heteronuclear spin case when we have 180 pulse on both the spins then what is going to happen J will not be refocused they continue to evolve chemical shifts give on the other end gets refocused this is what we understood and I said with the delay we can manipulate the delay between the 180 and 90 pulses in the spin echo sequence especially for heteronuclear spin echo along with the decoupling of proton to detect carbon I showed an example if the delay is manipulated in such a way delay is equal to 1 over 2 j manipulated in such a way we saw that ch ch2 ch3 all the three carbons will have zero intensity you will not be able to detect the signal whereas quaternary carbon will remain unaffected because that does not process at all so at j exactly equal to 1 over 2 j you can detect only quaternary carbon when you put j is equal to 1 over j delta with d is equal to or delta is equal to 1 over j the delay equal to 1 over j then what is going to happen i showed that ch and ch3 carbons will be positive in intensity whereas ch2 is in negative in intensity so you can distinguish between these two so this is what i showed and this with some one or two examples we understood about uh, with a j modulated spin echo how we can distinguish different carbons attached to different protons and this experiment is called attached proton test but only thing is you cannot distinguish between ch and ch3 that is a issue there you can identify the quaternary carbon which one at exactly equal one over j 2j uh, by whereas ch and ch3 will become both will become positive or negative depending upon how you do the phasing compared to uh, ch2 by our opposite in phase but between ch and ch3 to identify is some issue we will worry about it when you come to other experiment later with this we will go to a new topic today altogether different called polar polarization transfer technique what is a polarization transfer technique why do we need it we will understand <laughs> basically i have been telling you nmr is a highly insensitive technique that is what i said in the first or second class itself so basically because it is insensitive technique somehow you must you know enhance the sensitivity do some tricks so that we can get better signal better signal to noise ratio how do you do that there are several ways to get solution for the sensitivity issues i am going to show some couple of them here today solution to sensitivity problem of nmr is like this first thing use a higher quantity of the sample take large amount of sample 
there are certain limitations for that. You can't take too much of sample, then you know there will be aggregation, etc., and then homogeneity will again get bad. You will not get a good signal. Okay, you can somehow to some extent you can resolve the problem. What about isotopic labeling, especially for abundance in spins like carbon 13, nitrogen 15? You can do, but still natural sensitive insensitive issue cannot be addressed. Go to higher and higher magnetic field. I told you sensitivity depends upon magnetic field. Higher the magnetic field, larger the separation of the energy states between alpha and beta spin off case. As a consequence, population difference is larger. I said so we can get better sensitivity. That's also okay. And also I told you the sensitivity depends upon the temperature. When I discussed the Boltzmann population and uh, ratio, I explained this. It depends upon temperature. At lower temperature, we have better signal to noise ratio. So go to uh, very low temperature and record this uh, spectrum. This is also not practically feasible because uh, most of the time we don't have to do it in low temperature because there could be some dynamics in the sample which can get affected. So uh, although there are examples like this which is possible, they have each of them has their own its own limitations. Another way of doing is what is called playing with the spin dynamics and design a new experiment. This is something new, which is in our hands. We can manipulate the spin dynamics in such a way. We can design new NMR experiment to enhance the signal intensity. How do we do that? We transfer the large population difference of proton. Proton is the highest uh, sensitive nuclear among all the stable isotopes. I told you in the periodic table, highest gamma. Take the magnetization which is larger from proton. Give it to less sensitive nuclei carbon thirteen, nitrogen fifteen, etc. Thereby enhance the signal intensity of this. You understand? A proton is rich in signal. Take the signal from proton, give it to carbon and nitrogen. Then, when you detect them, as a consequence, this signal intensity will go up. This is something interesting. It is like take robbing a rich and paying the poor. You take the magnetization from rich proton, give it to poor carbon thirteen, nitrogen fifteen. How do we do? What is the condition to do all those things? We will discuss now. And this type of experiment are called population transfer experiment. I can transfer the population from abundant spins to rare spins. We can do that. This is one way we can enhance the signal intensity. Okay. How do you achieve this population transfer? There are two ways of doing it. One is called selective population transfer. Other is called selective population inversion. There are two ways we can do. Both are possible. How we each of them will work? How do we get the signal intensity more? We'll see now. We'll consider the example of homonuclear two weakly coupled protons. That means only two spins coupled. How many energy states are there? Four energy states we have been discussing. Okay. How do we? What is the intensity of each of the peaks in a weakly coupled case? I showed you when I discussed the Popel notation. The two weakly coupled spins, each of these spins will give doublets of equal intensity. So you must get four peaks of equal intensity in a weakly coupled homonuclear case, and that's what happens. We'll work it out by the energy level diagram. Hypothetically, put some numbers to calculate the population difference. I have put four spins here, two here, two here, and zero here. Now what we will do is. Will calculate the peak intensity. This I know. I told you this day. I see alpha s is going to beta s. So this is s transition. Here again alpha s is going to beta s. This is s transition. Here alpha is going to beta i. This is a i transition. This is a i transition. Okay. Now we know that. We'll calculate the intensity of each of these peaks. What is the intensity? I told you intensity is nothing but the difference in populations. If we calculate the intensity, for, for example, I spin, I spin is this one here to here, transition from two to four. Here two spins I have taken. This is zero, so two minus four, uh, two minus zero is two. Similarly, I, I spin four minus two again two, one to three transition, one to three and two to four are I spin transition. Transition from three to four is S transition. Again, two to two minus zero. This transition again, four minus two will be two. So in the example I have taken, 
the population distribution I have taken in such a way that all the four peaks are of equal intensity because I have taken a homonuclear weakly coupled spins. So, intensity has to be equal that is what the, I chose the population for calculation purpose. Please remember population difference is always difference between low energy state to higher energy state this is what we did we took the difference from here to here not from here to here then it will say minus and all those things ok. Population difference is from low energy state to higher energy state because we always conventionally low energy state is highly populated. The populations have been chosen to calculate the intensity just some numbers here I in the beta state I said 0 is population never be under the impression there is no population in beta state there are enough of pop spins there in all the spin states only for calculation purpose I have taken it 0 does not mean there is no population in beta beta state please remember that there exists population in all the states only the numbers are manipulated to get equal intensity for all the 4 peaks that is what I did. Now, what we will do is we will selectively saturate only one of the transitions of one of the nuclei. How do I do that? We use what is called a soft pulse. There are two we can apply hard pulse and soft pulse in NMR which I did not discuss in this in this course. In the previous courses some people can refer I have discussed. Hard pulse is a sharp pulse and it can excite you know high it can excite the entire spectrum of the range of frequencies present in particle spectrum. For example, proton 0 to 10 ppm all protons can be simultaneously excited. If you take a soft pulse means large width pulse I can selectively excite only one peak or two peak as only small band of width this is called selective excitation. Selectively I can excite only one proton or one signal one peak we can do whereas, I can apply a hard pulse and excite all the signals at a time all the protons at a time both are possible. What, what in this case we are trying to do is selectively I am going to do saturation of only one of the transition by using soft pulse that is what I said soft pulse means selectively I can do only for one of them it is a large pulse with a larger width. I have took, taken the example of spin states 1 and 3 I am saturating what do you mean by saturation I told you already in the first class itself saturation means both the energy states spin population both the states will become equal that means there is no signal you will not get any signal that is called saturation. So, what I will do is I will saturate like this I will take one spin from here and put it in the other from uh, this state alpha alpha state to beta alpha state I take it that is what I did I saturate only one of them. Now, let us calculate the intensity between all the uh, four transitions for a x spin see 1 3 there is no transition intensity is 0 because it is saturated what about 2 4 it intensity is 2 that is not affected at all what about s spin in the case of s spin this transition 3 minus 0 it is 3 whereas here 3 minus 2 it is 1 see what happened is intensity ratio has become 0 is to 2 is to 1 is to 3 it is very interesting what it means is after a certain time you give it you saturate and leave it after some time the spin go back to thermal equilibrium. But during the process what does what happened what did we do what does it imply it means saturating a particular transition resulted in the change of intensity of other peaks of the coupled spins something interesting I did not even disturb I spin I mean S spin I, I only saturated I spin transition only one of them but I saw the change in the S spin intensity something interesting. So, this is a very important point you should remember saturating a particular transition of one spin result in the change in the intensity of other coupled spin this is what happens the polar it means I have what I have done by doing this I transfer the polarization from one spin to another spin this is what is called polarization transfer. So, by transferring this I enhance the intensity you may ask me a question what is the use because there I am taking homonuclear spin they are already of same intensity we have to worry about dilute spin we will come to that later. So, the selective population transfer when I did 
imagine what we did here is we saturated one transition and saw the change in the intensity of its coupled partner that is important ok this is ok selective population transfer saturation we did SPT selective population transfer what about selective population inversion I said there is also possible that is also possible to do instead of saturating can I invert it I have been telling you please remember 90 pulse will bring the magnetization to x axis or y axis 180 pulse will invert the transitions 180 pulse results in inversion a transition if I have to invert that means I have to interchange the spin states between alpha and beta states that is done by a pi pulse. So, we can selectively invert the populations of any of the particular transition we will see what is going to happen now same 1 3 pi transition will take will take earlier we saturated made e equal 3 3, but now what we are doing we are not saturating, but we are inverting that means these 4 spins will go here these 2 spins will come here then what will happen assume I will do that by applying a soft pulse like this I did the selective inversion of transition 1 and 3 let us now calculate the intensity of the peaks very interesting is happening I transition some uh, for example if you take from 1 to 3 intensity is negative 2 minus 4 always I told you population difference now is from lower energy state to higher energy state. So, 2 minus 4 intensity became negative another I transition 2 minus 4 it is 2 go to S spin here this is S spin 2 minus 2 0 I do not get any signal go to other one other S spin 4 minus 0 is 4. So, what is happening is the intensities have become minus 2 2 0 and 4 very interesting I saturated one transition and then got the change in the intensity of its coupled partner identically I will invert a particular transition and see the enormous change in the intensity of its coupled partner this is what is called population inversion. So, selective population transfer and selective population inversion both of them results in the change in the intensity of its coupled partner we will understand that ok. So, far I was discussing homonuclear spins what happens if I take a heteronuclear spin system how does it change we will see remember I consider the example of heteronuclear carbon and uh, proton carbon gamma is 4 times lower than that of proton that is what we have been telling you resonating frequency of carbon is 4 times smaller than that of proton. So, as a consequence we have to redistribute the population such that for intensity should become 1 is to 4 correct in the case of A x homonuclear all are equal intensity, but if I take A x heteronuclear depending upon the gamma intensities are not identical if proton has intensity 4 8 carbon should be 2 if the proton is signal 4 intensity 4 carbon should be 1 because 1 is to 4 intensity we have to maintain accordingly we will redistribute the population now we will go there we will see the population distribution for heteronuclear case that is why in one of the classes I showed you the energy level diagram of homonuclear spin and heteronuclear spin heteronuclear spin here it is smaller energy separation is smaller because of lower gamma whereas if you take homonuclear see energy separation is very large here that is homonuclear case this is heteronuclear case lower gamma intentionally I have ch chosen this so that you can understand it better and I have chosen the population such that 0 2 8 and 10 why did I do that I told you let us calculate the populations using this population intensity of both I spin and S spin I is proton S is carbon 13 measure the let us calculate the intensity for I spin and S spin I spin transition is 1 to 2 intensity 10 minus 2 
8 ok. What about other, other i spin is 3 to 4 8 minus 0 again 8 they are equal intensity that is correct. Now go to s spin s spin transition is 1 to 3 10 minus 8 2 and 2 minus 4 0 this is 2 minus 0 is 2. So, what is the intensity ratio if I take this population 8 is to 8 is to 2 is to 2 or another word 4 4 1 1 this is what we expect because gamma of carbon is 4 times smaller. So, intensity of carbon is 4 times smaller that is the reason why I deliberately took the number of spins in different energy states like this. I manipulated the spins such that if I calculate I must get the intensity ratio 1 is to 4 for carbon and proton, proton should be 4 times larger than carbon 13 that is why I chose this and this is the number of spins like this that is all the, this thing there is nothing uh, again here in the beta beta state that the, I have taken 0 that does not mean there are no spins there are enough of spins only these numbers have been took, taken for understanding purpose. We will do this same experiment what we did for proton what is that we will do we will saturate one of the proton transitions which is the proton transition we can saturate we can saturate 1 3 or 2 4 3 4 whatever this is proton transition not this is not 1 3 I am sorry this one 1 2 is proton transition and 3 3 4 are proton transitions I transition will saturate and uh, we will saturate what do you mean by saturation make both the energy states equal population we will saturate transitions 1 and 2 what did I do I made populations between 1 and 2 spin state population difference is 0 that is called saturation I have selectively saturated the transition 1 and 2 as a consequence what is happening. Now, let us calculate the intensity for all the 4 peaks 1 2 because I have saturated intensity is 0 other proton transition is this one 3 4 4 3 minus 4 you will consider this is 8 spin and 0 spin 8 intensity is 8 that is also fine. Go to S transition S transition is 1 3 6 minus 8 minus 2 other S transition 6 minus 0 is 6 the intensity ratio is 0 to 8 is to minus 2 is to 6 what was the earlier intensity ratio 8 is to 8 is to 2 is to 2 but you see now some of the signals have higher intensity so there is a three fold increase in intensity of one of the peaks instead of 2 it became 6 three times you have enhanced the signal intensity for one of the peaks just by saturating one of the proton transition you understood the idea this is what we did for heteronuclear case. So, we did the saturation of one of them and there is a change in the intensity of other peaks other coupled partner of the heteronuclear spin for at least one of the transitions three fold increase in the intensity. We will do selective inversion also why only we have to saturate we will do selective inversion same transition we will take i n 2 1 and 2 what do you mean by selective inversion I will take all the spins here and put it here all, all the spins in this bring it down here that is what is called selective inversion I can selectively invert transitions spins 1 and 2 transition 1 and 2 I will invert it by applying a soft 180 pulse this is what I did I took remember I took the protons from state 1 to state 2 and protons from state 2 spins from state 2 brought down to state 1 that is all I did selective inversion I united the populations let us recalculate the intensity now of all the peaks look at it I transition is 2 minus 10 minus 8 another I transition 8 minus 0 
8 plus 8. Look at the S transition. S transition is another is 1 3, 1 3 is this, 2 minus 8 is minus 6, other one 10 minus 0 is 10. What is the ratio? Intensity ratio is now minus 8 to 8 is to minus 6 is to 10 or in other words simply 4 is to 4 is to 3 is to 5. That means in both the peaks here it was 2 is to 2 as enhanced intensity in one of them has gone up by 5 times one of the peak intensity has gone up by 5 times just by doing selective inversion of one of the transitions. You see the intensity now there is a transition increased by the coupled partner one of them by 3 other is 5 times because it was 2 became 6 2 became 10. So, intensity became 3 and 5 times more of course, one is negative other is positive we will worry about the sign later phase part we will discuss later, but what I want to tell you is in the heteronuclear case by selective inversion of one of the transitions there is enormous change in the intensity of this coupled partner by an order of 3 and 5. With the polarization inversion the center the intensity of the carbon 13 has gone up by 4 times correct right 3 minus for example, this is gone up by 4 times actually intensity of 1 3 and 2 4 transition are now 3 and 5. So, instead of 2 2 it became 3 and 5. So, it will be quite large 13 C signal is proton coupled as another important point you must remember. So, far it is fine we applied a 180 pulse do selective inversion and as the signal intensity, but how do you detect the signal? We detect the signal by doing decoupling of protons while collecting the carbon 13 signal we apply a RF pulse and proton. So, that carbon proton couplings are completely broken that is what we are going to do and this is an experiment for that. We apply a selective pi pulse this is called selective pulse 180 pulse on one of the transitions which will invert the population and also apply 90 pulse for detection applied selective person proton inverted the population immediately apply 90 pulse and start collecting the signal. According to our understanding this way would have caused lot of change in the intensity of its coupled partner that is carbon minus 3 and 5 should be there ok. We will collect the signal by doing decoupling. Now, we generates two coupled peaks with the anti phase character here ok this one anti phase character is there. What is happening here is we get peaks like this minus 3 and plus 5. When we do minus 3 and plus 5, if I start doing the decoupling, they get the vector addition will tell me that finally, the intensity is going to be only 2 because we are going to nullify the gain in the intensity whatever intensity you have gain is last you understood we did the selective population inversion of one of the protons and we saw signal intensity of the coupled carbon two peaks will change the intensity of minus 3 and plus 5 and they are anti phase in character one is minus 3 other is plus 5 if you add both of them it is plus 2 when you are decoupling you are you know we are breaking the coupling both of them will be added up when you do that what is going to happen 3 plus 5 and minus 3 will become plus 2 and all our efforts of selective inversion to gain the signal intensity is lost. Then what is the point in doing this whatever we wanted to gain is lost by doing the decoupling. So, that does not help us. So, what do we do we want to gain the inter signal intensity at the same time we want to do the decoupling also. If you do not do decoupling it is a different question, but you are decoupling that is the needed for carbon 13. So, this experiment has to be modified somehow, so that this intensity is not going to be cancelled out still we get gain plus decoupling that is the experiment you have to do. How to overcome this problem? Very easy you convert to anti phase peaks into in phase one is negative other is positive 
inside why do not you make both positive that is possible how do you do that we can do that by giving an additional delay after the detection pulse that is very important if I do that then what will happen both the signals will become in phase when they become in phase 3 and 5 they will add up and the intensity becomes more it will not get nullified that is what we will do see this is the signal intake this is the pulse earlier this delay was not there we started collecting here only this portion was here but now I have introduced the delay here and what is the delay we have to you put how much is the delay that depends upon 1 over 2 j ch what does 1 over 2 j do I already told you it creates anti phase vectors right already we have seen the spin say in a heteronuclear spin echo and homonuclear spin echo we saw that at exactly equal to 1 over 2 j the vectors were anti phase character already the anti phase character because of selective pulse we are applying in one of them carbon 13 coupled to it has already anti phase character minus 3 and plus 5. What we do is we are going to give a delay apply a pulse here bring the magnetization both of them to x y plane then if you give a delay of 1 over 2 j this will come back they will uh, uh, that is what we saw after 1 hour again another 1 hour 2 j if you give they will move by 90 degrees and then they will come here see what will happen this vector both this vector it will not here it will go into the actual other axis 90 degree they rotate they rotate by 90 degree see one is here other is one is here other is here they keep rotating and go in, into other axis and then both of them will be on the same axis after a particular delay. In principle if this is x axis in the x y plane they rotate by 90 degree it should go to y axis. So, I should show this signal as this as y or this as x I can do that ok. Now, because of 1 over 2 j delay both the signal have become positive fantastic. Now, we will do the decoupling it is possible to do decoupling. Now, when you do the decoupling both will collapse they will add up now become single peak of intensity 8 minus 3 plus 5 became plus 3 and plus 5 now it became 8 earlier intensity was 2 is to 2. So, what happened now it became 8 again in the intensity by a factor of 4 this, this is marvelous Mag gain in the intensity of by a factor of 4 results in the experimental time reduction by a factor of 16 4 square. So, this is an important technique called magnetization transfer or polarization transfer technique. You understood what we did now selectively invert one of the protons and then carbon 13 coupled will become anti phase in character, give a delay after applying 90 degree pulse, they will again anti phase become in phase character and they do the decoupling, you will get a singlet with the enhanced intensity of nearly 4 times. So, this is what is called polarization transfer experiment and actually there are two types of such magnetization transfer experiment possible one is called NOE other is called inept. So, I both I will discuss in the next class in the time is up I am going to stop here. So, what we discussed today I discussed about the polarization transfer I showed you what will happen how do we gain get the gain in the signal intensity among the coupled spins we took the example to two spins homonuclear case you can do the selective trans transaturation or selective population inversion both of them will give the signal both in homonuclear case and heteronuclear case. In the heteronuclear case I took the example of carbon and proton and I showed that the intensity when you do selective population inversion coupled partner will have intensity minus 3 and 5 plus 5 anti phase character nevertheless there is gain in the signal intensity, but we want to do the decoupling when you try to do the decoupling whatever the gain we all got will be lost because they are anti phase in character it get nullified instead of that we after the 90 pulse give a delay that delay should be equal to 1 over 2 j such that this become again in phase character these anti phase characters vectors in which case what is going to happen you get a signal along, in, along the same axis you do the decoupling you get the enhancement of the signal intensity by a factor of 4 why this factor of 4 comes 
because gamma of carbon is 4 times less than that and then we got the gamma enhancement intensity by factor of 4. This reduces the signal you know experimental time by 16 times and how do we do that? There are two ways of doing polarization transfer that is NOE and inert which I will discuss in the next class. Thank you very much.